What's going on? In this video, I'm going to show you how to read your WRX CVT transmission temperature. This car has the built in ability to read some sensor data, such as the boost pressure, the engine oil temperature, or how much you have the gas pedal pressed. But if you're trying to modify your car to add power, knowing the temperature of the transmission oil is important. You might do this before you upgrade the transmission cooler to see the difference before and after, or just to monitor the temperature in real time during spirited driving. To read your transmission temperature, you're going to need an OBD reader and an application written specifically to pull sensor data from the ECU. In my case, I'm using OBD Link LX, which is a Bluetooth enabled OBD reader, and Active OBD for Subaru, which is the Android app that will pull and display the sensor data. In this video, I'm only focusing on how to read the transmission temperature. I will cover the OBD port, OBD Link LX reader, and Torque Pro app, and all of their functionality as they relate to the WRX in separate videos. So what I got here is the OBD Link LX OBD reader. This is going to allow me to read sensor information from the car and it's going to stream it via Bluetooth to the to whatever app you're using on your phone. This is one of two which are recommended by the app that I'm using, but that's not the only reason why I ended up getting this one. I got this one in particular because it's reviewed well. It's not on the very very expensive uh, end of the spectrum as far as OBD readers goes. And it's definitely not one of those cheap eBay ones that cost $10 that I wouldn't trust, you know, plug it into the ECU port of my car. Now, this OBD reader does a lot of things and I'm going to cover that in separate videos. In this video, I'm just going to focus on getting the CVT temperature. So I'm going to go over it as if I just got this in the mail and I'm doing it for the first time. So let me go ahead and show you this bad boy right here. In the box, you're just going to find the actual OBD link reader and just some basic instructions on how to set it up now i'm going to show you how to do this um, based on what i'm going to tell you you don't even need to look at these but if you're curious it's very simple and that's all that comes with it so definitely not much to it for what it is it's a very simple device it's meant to be just plugged in and left in the car if you want it to leave it in the car you can use it across you know however many vehicles you own so i want to show you something right here there's a little button right there that's the button that's gonna allow you to pair it with your phone. So one of the safety features of this is that um, it doesn't continuously broadcast its location, its presence, basically via Bluetooth. That's a safety feature so that presumably somebody with ill intent can't just go in there and, and basically hack into it and basically have access to your ECU, which would be a bad thing. I don't know why anybody would, but hey, you just never know. And you know, it's a good safety feature and it's there. So you're gonna have to push that button in order for your phone to even see it. And I'll show you that in a second. So the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the OBD Link LX and I'm gonna plug it into the OBD port in the car. One thing to keep in mind, make sure the car is off to be extra safe. I removed the key from the ignition altogether. I went ahead and switched to my phone's camera so I can show you because of uh, obviously limited space down here, but let me switch hands. I'm gonna plug it into the OBD port of the car, which for our cars, if you have a WRX, is on the left-hand side. See it right there. So there's the you know brake pedal. There it is right there. So you should see some lights on it when you plug it in. Again, make sure the car is off and the keys off out of the ignition. Okay, there we go. It's plugged in. All right, so that's it. That's all we got to do for this part of it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to pair with your phone. So now that we have the OBD Link LX plugged into the car's OBD port, it's time to pair the phone to the OBD Link. In order to do that, we have to start communications between the ECU and the OBD um, LX reader. To do that, we're gonna put the key in the ignition and set it to on. Once you do that, you're gonna go to your phone's Bluetooth settings. So in my particular case, I have the Galaxy S8. I have the Bluetooth icon right along the top. I'm gonna to long press on it to get to the settings. All right, and once you get to the screen, it's automatically scanning. So I'm gonna stop it real quick to show you something. I'm gonna hit stop. These are all my paired devices. These are all devices that I have paired already. And as you can see, there is no OBD Link LX on that list. So we have to add it to that list. So to do that, we're gonna hit the scan button and I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna find it. It's not gonna find the OBD Link LX. 
it, it'll show up down here under available devices so it's not gonna find it the reason why it's not gonna find it is because that the OBD link LX has a safety feature where it doesn't broadcast its location continuously so you have to hit that little button that I showed you earlier so I'm gonna go ahead and do that and then reinitiate the scan All right, now that we set the OBD Link LX and put it into uh, pair mode, we're gonna hit scan again and it should show up down here under available devices. There it is, it shows up almost immediately. So once you do that, once it shows up down there, you click on it. When it asks you to confirm the passkey, just hit okay. And once you do that, the OBD Link LX is paired with your phone. This is a one-time thing. Once you do that, you don't have to go through this process again. All you have to do is have your Bluetooth on, and once you start whatever application you're using, say Torque Pro or uh, Active OBD, whatever app you're using uh, to interface with OBD Link LX will automatically use that Bluetooth link. Now that we paired the OBD Link LX with a phone, we're gonna go ahead and get the application that we need to read the transmission temperature so I'm just gonna go to the Play Store all right hit the search bar and I've already searched for it right there active OBD for Subaru so I'm gonna click on that but you'd have to type it obviously the very first thing that comes up that's what we're interested in active OBD for Subaru I want to show you something if you scroll down a little bit you will see down here active OBD TQ that's the plugin for torque pro app that's not what you're interested in. That's actually a pay app. That's $5.99. That has more functionality and allows you to use it through the Torque Pro app. But we're not doing that right now. What we're interested in is Active OBD for Subaru, the free application that it is a standalone application. So that's gonna allow us to do quite a few things, but it is free, which means it'll have some ads and it'll have limited functionality. But for our purposes, it's gonna do what we need it to do. So we're just gonna click on that to install it. So I'm gonna click on install. Get that downloaded and installed. It's just gonna take a second. All right, so once that comes up, you can just hit open if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and go hit back and just make sure that it puts the icon on my screen and I'm gonna go through it that way just to show you what it does. All right, shortcut at it, there it is. Active OBD shortcut. This is gonna be the first time we're gonna open up the app, so I'm gonna just go ahead and hit it to start it up. It's gonna establish the connection. It's got a four step process right there, two out of four, and it shouldn't take very long. Boom, that's it. Now we're ready to roll. Right now, Active OBD application is talking to OBD Link LX, and it's an OBD Link LX is connected directly to the ECU of the car, and it's giving us sensor information that the car doesn't give you. And the one we're interested in right now is right there, automatic CVT fluid temperature. So right now, temperature of my CVT fluid is 64 degrees Fahrenheit. It's 64 degrees Fahrenheit because it's gonna be close to ambient temperature. The car is cold, it's been sitting overnight. So this temperature, when you first start the car, is gonna be close to ambient temperature. So right now, 64 degrees, the temperature outside is 63 degrees. So it's working perfectly. Now, that's all we're interested in for this video, but I just wanna show you real quick, there's a lot more functionality to this app things that you can look into and things that you can experiment with. So obviously the app is not just for that. So I'm gonna cover some more of this stuff in other videos, but for this video, we're just interested in the CBT fluid temperature since that's the important uh, parameter to look into whenever you're modifying your car. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and take the car for a ride so you can get a sense of how long it takes for the CBT fluid to get to temperature and what temperature is considered normal. So let's go. At this point, the car has only been on a couple of minutes while I got ready. You can see the engine oil temperature is at 95 degrees Fahrenheit and the CVT oil temperature is starting at 59 degrees. The ambient temperature is mid to high 50s right now. Okay, so I got a little overzealous and dropped my camera. It's been about 12 minutes and the engine oil reached operating temperature and is hovering right around 198 to 203 degrees Fahrenheit. The CVT oil temperature now sits just above 150 degrees in the same span of time. My driving has been fairly reserved, but I'm gonna push it a little bit now.
All right, it's been another 10 minutes of uh, pretty dynamic driving and my CVT reached its operating temperature right around 180 degrees Fahrenheit. This is on a stock car driven somewhat conservatively, so if you're doing launches or flooring it, or you have power mods, you can definitely expect your temps to be higher. For me, I want to get some baseline transmission temperature so that when I add the transmission cooler, I know exactly how much it's helping. And also, when I start adding mods, I know how much they are stressing my transmission versus the stock setup. One final thing, if you already have the Torque Pro app or are getting it, it's worth getting the active OBD plugin for it. I'm going to open up the app by pressing the icon and that's going to launch it and auto automatically connect to OBD link through Bluetooth. On the main screen, you're going to see active OBD plugin. And if you get the plugin, I suggest you uninstall the standalone app to prevent connection issues. Okay, so Torque Pro is now connected and you can tell because the RPMs are now showing. So I'm going to click on the active OBD icon and it's going to take me to a comprehensive list of all the sensor data the plugin can potentially read. Here you can select every parameter you want the plugin to attempt to get from the ECU. Not every parameter in here will work, especially if it's grayed out, but you can still select it if you want and see if it's going to work for you. Only the ones which are clicked are going to show up on the Torque Pro app. So I'll hit the back key and get to Torque Pro and I'll hit the real-time information icon. I can swipe to an empty screen and then long press on the background, click on add display, decide which type of display I want. So I'll pick dial meter in this case. Then I can add the parameter I want to read. All of these that say ACT OBD are coming from the plugin. So for this video, we're interested in the CVT fluid temperature, so I'll select that. Then I'll select the size. In my case, I'll pick large. I can then grab it and move the display wherever I want on the grid, and that's it. Right now, that's my CVT temperature. Of course, I can add another display if I choose and customize it however I want. I'll pick battery voltage and make it small and put it right under the CVT temperature. Torque Pro has a lot of neat features that you can experiment with and for a car like this it's definitely worth it for beginners. If you watch this video I hope you got something out of it. Please like it if you did and subscribe for more. As always thanks a lot for watching and take care.